Yeah, so by the time we're ready to be made, all, every ground can come off.
We're taking along technologies that will be important for future, uh, future exploration. Uh, things like being able to make oxygen from, from the atmosphere on Mars. Uh, if you can make oxygen, you can create, uh, obviously, uh, oxygen to breathe for, as uh, for astronauts, but also oxygen that can be used as, as fuel to return, uh, to return people to the Earth. So it's an important technology for human exploration. Uh, you know, we're going to be landing with a new, um, a new technology called terrain relative navigation, which allows us to avoid hazards. Uh, this is also a, a feed-forward technology that's important for future, uh, both robotic and human exploration. Um, we're going to be taking uh, microphones with us. You know, for the first time. We're going to have uh, that human sense on another planet. You know, we've had, you know, we've had cameras many times, you know, or sight, I suppose, but we've never really heard our environment on on Mars. And I think it's going to be exciting uh, to hear the entry, descent, and landing uh, activities on the spacecraft, and and hear the the wheels turning on the surface of Mars. I think it will give it the project a uh, uh, sense of presence for, for people. And I hope that's exciting to, to people as well. Everybody knows the story of how we landed on the moon and the first steps on the moon, but a lot of people don't understand that there were robotic precursors uh, to those Apollo missions. And they were very critical in paving the way for those next steps. Uh, and I think very much of Mars 2020 in the same vein. I think it's uh, I think it's in the same category. We're taking technology technologies to Mars and uh, improving those technologies that are important for that future human exploration. I think everybody involved in the project and and uh, associated with. Um, with the mission has said to me that I've talked to, boy, you couldn't have named this thing any better <laughs> since, since we've had to deal with the pandemic. And uh, as I said before, you know, when it hit, it, you know, it was kind of like walking into a, a dark blind alley. You just didn't know what was out there in front of you. 
And so uh, it took some faith to, to, to go forward and, and a t determination to, to deal with whatever came, came your way. And I think, uh, uh, you know, hey, that's the definition of per perseverance, right? I mean, that's, that's what you need to do to get through these, this kind of thing. And I think, I think everybody that I've talked to uh, has said the same thing, which is uh, you just couldn't have named this thing any better. <laughs>The Mars 2020 community uh, was not the only uh, group facing this. As I said, the community and, and the country and, and around the globe, uh, everybody had to deal with this. I asked the team a couple months ago if they would like to do something to um, kind of symbolize and mark uh, these, these challenges that we faced. Uh, and they designed something that we called a COVID-19 perseverance plate. This is a plate that's now affixed to the port side of the rover. It has some a symbol of a, uh, uh, a globe representing uh, all of us that face this challenge together, the spacecraft leaving uh, the Earth on its way to Mars, and all of this supported uh, by the now familiar staff and serpent of the uh, medical community. Uh, the community that was really on the front lines uh, keeping, keeping us safe. And you know they they really inspired us, I think, through this period and um, and we hope that this plate and we hope that this mission uh, in some in some small way can inspire can inspire them in return. When we think about our role as the first leg of a potential Mars sample return campaign, I personally, and I think I, I can speak for the science team on this, we take the responsibility to put together a, a compelling cache of samples that is worthy of return to Earth. We take that very seriously, and we know that there is a lot riding on Mars sample return, you know, money-wise, effort-wise, commitment from the government and the public, and it's our job on Mars 2020 um, to collect a compelling cache of samples that is worthy of all of that time, money, and effort. And I take that responsibility very seriously. And, and I, you know, it's the kind of thing that keeps me up at night. You know, are we going to do what we need to do to, to justify the effort that we've put behind this? Yeah, so Jezero Crater is, is unique on Mars. Um, it's a unique place, and it's a very special place. And we know now, thanks to previous orbiter missions and rover missions, that there are a lot of craters on the surface of Mars that could have once hosted ancient lakes. And we have evidence that that's, that's true. Um, but not every lake or, or crater that we think had a lake actually preserves evidence that that lake was there. Um, in Jezero, we have probably one of the most beautifully preserved delta deposits on Mars in that crater. Uh, in Jezero Crater for us to, to study and, and to rove, um, and we can see that. We also know, thanks to the, the geography there, we have an inlet valley and an outlet valley, so we know that this crater basically filled up like a bathtub. Water flowed in, water flowed out. You always expect to run into some mishaps, challenges, anomalies as you're putting the vehicle together. Um, you do your best to avoid them, but you know you're going to run into them, and so you try to uh, react quickly and move forward. Um, there's usually something that hits every mission that you don't expect, and by far and away, the one that got in our way here was the COVID pandemic that uh, really started to ramp up and hit us just about the time the ATLO team was getting ready to ship the flight spacecraft. Uh, down to Florida for final processing and launch. So, At this time, Mars Helicopter Ingenuity is fully integrated on the rover. The helicopter is stowed under the belly pin of the rover and has been checked out to be fully operational in the configuration that is going to be launched and operated in space. So with the helicopter ready for launch, our team is now working on preparing for operations after launch. We are updating our tools, uh, our simulations, 
and rehearsing uh, for the scenarios that we're going to encounter.